Hi, this is Rosemary from The Unfinished Lesson, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I simplified my studio registration process by using Google Forms. So, like many other teachers, I ended up using, and it was pretty horrible, all these papers before. And honestly, who wants to do that, right? It's a lot of work for the parents to fill out. It's a lot of work to check to make sure you have everything. So I'm going to show you an easier way. And it's the way that my clients have told me they definitely prefer. All right, so here we go. What I use now is Google Forms. In this form, you'll probably write down your studio name, registration form, and then I would highly recommend putting the year. And the reason for this is because you can actually duplicate the form. And this is what I do to save a lot of time year after year. First section, you're gonna need contact details. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here. I won't be going through all the individual things, but I will. what I will do is give you a few tips to help you get the most out of the form. So you'll need a phone number in all likelihood. Make sure that you put down what format you want it to be. That means that when this form is saved into, say, Google Sheets, and you, if you want to download it into an Excel file, like as a spreadsheet, you're fine to do that as well. But that way, all the phone numbers look the same. If you need a home phone number and then an alternate number, obviously you can add that in. And then make sure that they can tell you the best way that you want them or that they want you to reach them. So maybe it's by email, maybe it's by phone home, like the home phone number or the alternate phone number. Once you've done this and you um, have all the contact details you want, you're going to click on the um, question and then go ahead and add a section. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've actually filled this out already. And so it's going to automatically continue to the next section. In student info, you're going to want their name. If you type down birth date, it's going to automatically put it into a format for you. Um, I really like this. It means I don't have to format this at all. And you'll notice some of these are short answer. And so that's this. As soon as I type in date, it automatically selects date. And actually, just before you keep going, you're going to notice every single question is required. If you don't need to know something, don't worry about asking it on the registration form. It's just easier to have everything that's on there a required thing versus some things people can fill out and some things they don't have to. All right, here, do you have another student to register? You're going to notice that it actually changes where they go depending on their answer. What I did is I clicked these three little dots and I'm going to the section based on the answer. If they have another student to register, you're gonna see over here, I have duplicated this section and I can show you how to do that. It's these three dots, duplicate yeah. section. And so if they do, it'll take them to the next one. They can register another student. If they don't, it's just gonna jump them straight over to my studio policies. This allows us to customize the form in a way that we can't do with paper forms. All right, so say you've got up to three students. Usually that's what I do. You're going to notice this last one. I've added something extra here, haven't I? So I'm going and clicking on the question. Click on these three little dots and I'm adding a description. So if you have more than two students to register, in the case of my studio, if you have more than three students to register, just select yes. You're going to go to the next part of the form, but don't worry, I'll be connect, uh, contacting you directly for further details. That way you don't have to have 10 different student info sections on the off chance that you teach 10 students all in the same family. Okay, so maybe that was a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. So we've gotten all the information. We've once again added a section and we've got studio policies now. Please make sure that you read them carefully. We wanna make sure that these are really 
clearly laid out. And then here's the trick. Do you agree to these terms? Yes. I'm not interested in teaching someone who isn't going to agree to my studio policies. So I don't even give them the option to say no. They only have the option to say yes. If they have questions, they can just leave the form, contact me, get their answers, and then continue on. But this makes it so much easier. Um, you're not having to look through to see which people did not agree to your policies. So once again, once you've filled in your studio policy, creating a new section, and we've got photo and video release form, same ideas here. You're going to fill in all the details, kind of like you did with your policies up here, and then give them the option. Do they grant the rights for you to take photo and video, or do they not grant these rights? This is important because legally you may have to give that option. Um, many countries actually are have moved over to this. And so just make sure that you give them the option. After this, they're going to go into the next section, which is lesson availability. You're going to notice a lot of it says, please read these carefully. <laughs> so studio, studio lesson availability. You're going to put in your teaching days and hours here. I think that it is incredibly important that we have balance, that we are not tied down to our studios all the time. And so if you've seen some of my other videos or read some of my other stuff, I talk about how important it is to have set teaching times. That if there are other things, in my case, when my kids were little saying goodnight to them, I had to stop teaching by a certain point in order to be able to say goodnight to them. So whatever your hour, days and hours are, put them here. That way, when you ask them, what times and days are you available? They know it's only within these days and times. And in my studio, I have it set up slightly differently than this. And so for my re-registering clients, it would say like, would you like to keep the day and time from this year? Yes, no, or maybe. So for example, my homeschooling students, um, oftentimes when I'm doing registration, they don't have the schedule for when their kids might be doing an in-school day. And so then we just make sure that it's a maybe and I can fit them in later. And again, days and times that they're available, they can just write it here. Um, it's probably not going to be used. I always reassure them, but it's a just in case. And then last section is really just a thank you and let them know when they're going to hear back from you and when registration is considered complete. Maybe for your re-registering clients, this is it. They filled it out. They're done. For new clients, maybe they have to um, pay a fee, you know, a, a new client fee or materials fee or whatever it might be. And so once that's done, then registration is complete. All right, so this was a very quick overview of the form. You know what? I hope that this helps you. It gives you an idea of how you can lay things out. And um, it certainly makes things a lot easier. I know I've said that like a million times in this video. It really, really did. It made things so much easier. Now, if you're wondering what kind of documentation you need for your studio registration, or um, you're kind of wondering a little bit more details, in the description below, I'm going to make sure that I put a link to um, an article on the site that'll guide you through that process a little bit more. All right. Have an incredible day. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you keep getting details like this or tips and tricks like this, I guess I should say.